my relatives agreed to. Julie is my Pampa name. Casey Camp Cornick is the name the colonizers call me. You can call me that too if you like to. I'm honored to be among you and to say thank you to you for listening. Want to especially thank the indigenous people of the Amazon and the Andes for allowing me to be here. I come from Turtle Island. The occupiers call it North America. And there are many reasons that I'm here to share this time with you, particularly the indigenous people on behalf of our mother. Mr. President, if I may, uh, I would like to call on uh, Tom Goethe, one of our spiritual leaders, to offer an appropriate song at this time on the light of stage of these candles to, to also welcome the spirits so that we can truly be represented in the manner in which we should. And to honor the gentleman that you spoke of earlier. I believe that uh, he is one of many that we could all think of in our hearts that we're inviting him at this time to give us guidance.
Thank you. We got, we got um, the herb that was burning in here comes from our sacred Sundance grounds where we go to pray each year. Where we fast, we go without water in the beginning. We go without food. So that our generations to come might have those things. Until one truly feels thirst, one doesn't always appreciate the, the magic of the spirit of the sacred blood of our Mother Earth, our grandmother Earth, our relatives. Until one feels hunger, one can't always understand what it feels like when our Mother Earth is unable to produce enough for our children and grandchildren and peoples to come, the unborn, to even make it, to be able to breathe the air, be born of the water that lives within their mother and becomes part of the cloud, that becomes part of the movement that the moon also gives us. So to be able to attempt to speak on behalf of all indigenous people is truly an impossible task, but an honor to attempt. When we speak of the indigenous people, we're speaking of those that live in so many different areas that cohabitate with our mother the earth. We're speaking of those that live in the Sierra Desert. We're speaking of those that live in the Andes. We're speaking of those that live in the Arctic Circle. We're speaking of those that live in the Amazon. We're speaking of those that live in the plains of Turtle Island or North America. We're speaking of those in Mongolia. And each and every one has a sacred and separate relationship to Earth. But the relationship is deep and abiding and unbreakable with each of our indigenous relatives. The relationship is that of oneness for all of us. Whether we have the expression in the same way as others have depends on the portion of the earth that we inhabit, depends on the relationship that has been established by the Father, Son, by the Moon Mothers, by the flows of the river, by the Thunder Nation, by the rocks themselves. Because we know and we understand that there is nothing new about this age-old relationship that we participate in. That this relationship is one that is cellular. It is spiritual. It is soul deep. And it is body reflecting. These bodies, many of us refer to as the robe that we wear over our spirit. Each of us is born with a unique spirit. Each of us comes to this earth through our own mother, born of water, born of flesh. What is the flesh made of? Science tells us that it is one cell developing over and over again. Where did that cell come from? In our understanding, in the understanding that I know, that cell comes from the food that my mother ingested. That food is of the forelegs. That food is of the wings. That food is of the ones that have their roots deep inside. That food grows from the soils and the rocks and the winds and the sun and the rhythm of the moon is inherent within. And the thunder nation that comes and waters these things if there isn't man-created droughts is holding all of the elements of the fire that comes from the Father that's called lightning and the 
white world. It's holding the water that we don't even know where it came from. Perhaps it comes from the steam of the Amazon. Perhaps it comes from the melting of the glaciers. Perhaps it comes from you and I when we sweat. But that water is part of our body. And we are part of that water. To simply be able to take a drink, to simply be able to turn on a faucet, to simply be able to appreciate the sacredness of this life-giving essence is something that is part of every indigenous ceremony I've ever been to anywhere. To honor the fire that is us. If one considers when one goes back there that the spirit leaves the body, what is left? This robe that we've worn over the spirit. What happens to this body when it goes back to the earth? The heat leaves it. It becomes cold again. The fire is gone. The breath leaves it. The wind itself leaves from the body. The water leaves it. It becomes dehydrated. And those original cells that are divided from that one cell again be part of the cycle of our mother, our grandmother, our relation, the earth. Within the United Nations Declaration on Indigenous People that was implemented in 2007, one of the key components that they spoke of is a right to free, prior, and informed consent for the indigenous people for whatever comes into our territory. What about our Mother Earth? Who has asked her? We do. We do. We of the indigenous nations understand and know that in order to continue to be part of this sacred cycle of life, we must honor that relationship. We must ask permission in our own way, in the traditions that have led us to the, this place, to be here on this day. I was carrying, holding my, my relative's hand, Shannon, my niece, Osprey this morning. And I told him, aren't we blessed to be here on this day? The sun rose on this day. We received war. We became part of a blessed cycle that human beings are only invited to attend. And we indigenous people understand that. We're not guaranteed that the sun should rise. We're not guaranteed that the rains will make our rivers flow. We're not guaranteed that those things that grow from the earth will continue to feed us. We're not guaranteed to be able to bring our children into birth unless we respect and understand that sacredness that is our relationship that allows these bodies, these ropes we are wear over our spirit to continue to live. And the way that we do that is today. Today to begin that day with an acknowledgement and a prayer that this Mother Earth is a living organism as truly as we are. That our human egos be set aside to recognize the sacred relationship we have with everything that is part of this, what they call the biosphere of Earth. What we call the extension of ourselves, our spirits, our souls, our bodies. And we believe as indigenous people that we have a finite amount of time to ask the rest of the human beings to understand 
that we may not continue to rape, defile, mine, frack, extract, burn petroleum products, unless we would choose knowingly to never have the generations to come behind us to have these honors that we have, to breathe this sacred air, to drink this sacred water, to eat of the plant life, to eat of the four legs that willingly share their lives with us as we do with them. How can we, as human beings, not acknowledge the wisdom of the roots of our own legacies that were left to us. No matter where we're from, no matter what we have been brought up in terms of knowledge. Here we are today with so many ways to explain these things. I can explain it to you as well as I can from, from the indigenous viewpoint, from where I live. Science can explain it in another way, but we all have to be aware. The time is now for us to make the difference and whether the seven generations to come have the honor and the prayer and the way of life that we do today. Again, it's an honor to speak with you. Robin, it's good to be here with you again. Each and every one of you, I honor your life. I honor the bloodlines all the way back as far as they go and as far forward as our Mother Earth allows us to go. We must remember that she is in stress and in pain at this time. And with a shrug of her shoulder, she could shake loose these ticks, these fleas called human beings. And she can breathe and eat and drink. And yet she loves us. And she wants us to continue. Sure. Sí, sí. Podríamos decir que la, la madre tierra está, está enferma. Is, is Mother Earth sick? Could, could, could we say so? I would say that she has sore spots. I would say that she has areas within her being that is hurt and bruised and in pain. I know that where I come from, there are earthquakes where there never has been earthquakes before. I hear her talking when she shudders. I hear her saying, enough. So maybe she's sick, but I don't believe so. I think she's merely in the throes of change. And that she's telling us, unless we change with her, then we're the sick ones and we're going to control the land. ¿Cuál, ¿Cuál es la responsabilidad de la humanidad con la Madre Tierra? The same responsibility as she offers to us. The responsibility to nurture. The responsibility to care. The responsibility to not overuse what other people call resources. The responsibility to leave the oil in the soil. To stop extracting every bit of dirty energy that will pollute the very life of every living thing, including her. The responsibility to share for each and every human that is here today. Many of you know how to use the internet. I use the spiritual internet. And I believe that among all of us, that we have the ability to share what it is that we know as individuals that can change the dynamics of what's happening today. Usted ha dicho que la Madre Tierra es un ser vivo. Usted ha dicho que 
que la humanidad de alguna manera hemos, le hemos afectado. Si es que la madre tierra es un ser vivo, la humanidad podría consultar a la madre tierra. Si es cómo intervenir y hasta dónde, hasta cuánto. Yes, yes we can. And I think in so many ways that is part of the indigenous culture is to consult Mother Earth in virtually every way and to ask for guidance. I believe that if we pay attention, uh, let's say that one lives where I live in Oklahoma. If one begins to notice as we have that certain species are moving further and further from the south that never lived in our territory before, and now those creatures from the warm countries are now into our territory. What does that tell us? It tells us that it is warming up where we are. It's that simple. And many of the other signs are that simple and that noticeable. We can tell when these cycles have changed in our part of the country where the weather is erratic. We cannot tell whether it's going to be warm or cold at any given season. What does that tell us? That tells us there is climate change in their terms. What does it tell us when the migration of the birds is at a different time than it ever has been? It tells us that the seasons have changed for the winged ones as well. All signs are obvious, and she is speaking to us loud and clear. Okay, sí, este, este tribunal está escuchando de usted. ¿Cómo podría el tribunal usar esa sabiduría indígena para poder comprender lo que está pasando con la madre tierra? ¿Cómo hacer un diálogo intercultural? ¿Qué sugiere usted? Are we doing that now? Are we having that intercultural dialogue? Does it feel that way to you? Uh, what, I, what I was speaking of, uh, I don't know who it was with, I don't know Maddie or, or Robin or anyone, but we were speaking of the power of the people, of the, of the people, not the power of the United Nations not the power of the states that are in the United Nations, but the power of the people themselves. I would believe that each and every one of, of you have your own networking and your own understanding of this time of change, or else you wouldn't be here today. So the dialogue has been in action for a period of time. You mentioned six sessions on this rights of nature, this rights of Mother Earth. The dialogue is beginning to permeate throughout societies. And we're doing it in whatever way each individual can, and for each of us who chooses to live life, like you do for your grandchildren, like we do for the seven generations to come. The dialogue is alive and happening, so how do we magnify that? that becomes to each individual and what is your capabilities of doing that. And at the same time, ask. That's what my mother used to tell me, ask for help. She said that the spirits, the spirits of any thing, whether they're that brother who made the ultimate sacrifice two days ago, whether it's the spirit of a blade of grass, whether it's the spirit of the Amazon River, whether it's the spirit of the deer, the elephant, the eagle, the condor. That if you ask for help, you'll receive that help. And that help may come in what is called a metaphysical way, but it gives you strength, it gives you direction, and it tells you how to proceed. Okay, so muchísimas gracias.